How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. Now on today's show we're going to be speaking about Spurs and in particular Jose Mourinho because he clearly doesn't know what social distancing means. Um, we're also going to be speaking about the FA because they believe that they will lose up to a billion pound if the Premier League is not completed and we're also going to be speaking about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and his thoughts that Premier League footballers are easy targets. I represent my fucking self. How we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So the first place we're going to start is Spurs and the story that broke late yesterday. And when I first saw this, I genuinely thought it was April the 1st. I thought that somebody was on a wind up. Surely this was not true. Surely. No. What on earth have I seen? Jose Mourinho in a local park taking training. Um, now, he was supposed to be doing a one-on-one -on -one session with Ndombele. Um, when also David and Sanchez um, and Ryan Sessegnon turned up as well. And the four of them were in a local park having a training session. Are you actually taking the piss? Has somebody not reminded them of what's actually going on at the moment? Are they actually that stupid? You know, one of the rules of the lockdown is very, very simple, all right? You can go out to exercise, but in no more than a group of two, and you've got to be with someone within your own household. Well, I'm sorry, and Dombele and Mourinho don't live together, do they? You know, neither does Sanchez and Ryan Sessegnon. I heard they might live in the same complex block, but they shouldn't be with each other. They don't live together. And you're in the local park taking training sessions. Are you that wound up and that annoyed at Ndombele's fitness and the way he's been performing at Spurs that you have to take him to the local park during the middle of lockdown oh my word and also there's the traveling side of things if i'm right in believing jose Mourinho lives in chelsea where this park was was in barnet why are you traveling from chelsea to barnet was that essential i'm genuinely dumbfounded by this report Honest to God, it is a truthful report. I'm not even joking. Listen, Tottenham's players have been reminded of their responsibilities during the coronavirus lockdown after some were spotted flouting social distancing rules as Jose Mourinho was seen working in a public park with Tangai Ndombele. The Premier League has been suspended since mid-March due to the pandemic, with government-enforced measures meaning people can only go outside for food, health reasons or work if you cannot do it from home. Individuals are also allowed to go for a walk or exercise outdoors once a day if adhering to social distancing guidelines, which means a gap more than two meters unless with members of the same household. But pictures and videos have emerged on social media appearing to show some Spurs players ignoring those guidelines. Spurs head coach Mourinho was pictured doing a session with midfielder Ndombele on Hadley Common, where it is believed the pair were only working together despite an image seeming to show two other people with them. Davidson Sanchez and Ryan Sessegnon did their own work and were caught by a social media user running side by side around the same park in Barnet, North London. <laughs> And then he even goes on to say here, yeah, Spurs right back Serge Aurier also posted a video of himself on Instagram jogging alongside another person with the club having underlined in the government's COVID-19 regulations to their players. <laughs> Seriously, am I actually seeing things? You absolute brain dead idiots. How on earth do you think you're going to get away with it? You know, the size of your back gardens. Why don't you go and do it there where nobody can see you if you're going to flout the law? You know, you shouldn't be doing it full stop. But you go to a local park. And like I said, Mourinho's travelled 
for where he lives in Chelsea, and I've seen the images as well, he's wearing a Tottenham tracksuit. <laughs> Seriously. He's got that big, bright, purple tracksuit on. It's like, what are you doing? What are you honestly doing? It's like a big sign above your head. Look at me, look at me. Oh my actual God. I'm dumbfounded. And you know what? Fair play to Spurs fans because they're certainly not sticking up for them. They're condemning Spurs. And this is just another incident involving Spurs in the last week that has put the club to shame. All right. And the fans who have got to take the brunt of it, you know, and it's not even their fault. It's the club. You know, let's get on to the situation of the furloughing of the staff. You know, we see that Liverpool overturned their, you know, decision to do that. Have Spurs followed suit yet? Has Daniel Levy and that stepped forward and said, you know what, we're not going to actually ask for the government help. We're actually going to put our hands in our own pocket. No, nothing, not a thing. Am I expecting them to? No, not a chance. And Spurs fans are absolutely embarrassed. They are fuming about it. You know, they want Levy out. They want change. You know, and this is just another incident. Breaking government guidelines to go training in the park. After everything that happened this weekend with people going to the parks and all the sunbathing and all this other kind of stuff. And you're out there. You are a Premier League manager. Jose Mourinho, you're wearing full tracksuit and you're training in the park, you prat. What an absolute moron. Can't say no more, man. I'm absolutely dumbfounded by this story. Absolutely speechless. Serious to God. Um, next story is the Premier League warns of a £1 billion loss if the season is not completed. Now, We've all heard over recent weeks about the Sky money, um, BT and everything else. And it's a lot of money that they would have to pay back. Um, and we know that. And that seems to be one of the reasons why they want to get the season up and running as quick as they can and finished. Despite the fact that there's a lot of people dying around the world, around us. Um, but listen, uh, the Premier League chief executive Richard Masters has warned the league faces losing at least a billion if the season is not completed. In a letter in reply to MP and DCMS chair Julian Knight, who had called for a windfall tax on clubs that cut the pay of non-playing staff without reducing that of players, Masters said that clubs could go out of business if such a levy was imposed. Um, you will appreciate, like much of the productive economy in the UK, we are losing revenue at an unprecedented level. Uh, we face a £1 billion loss at least if we fail to complete the season 2019-20 and further losses going forward if the seriousness of the pandemic deepens and extends into the future. Um, so listen, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, that the Premier League are going to lose a lot of money if they don't complete the season. We can all have our arguments and everything else. We all want football to start up again um, at some point. It'd be lovely if the world could go back to normal next week and we could all just get on with our lives, play football. Liverpool can hurry up and win the league and we can just carry on and then it's done. But that's not the situation and I've said that. And for me, from the outside looking in, it's like a lot of these, you know, people within power are going, well, we're going to lose money. We're doing this. We're doing that. We've got to get the season underway. And they're not really thinking about the bigger picture, which is all the people dying. I spoke about this on yesterday's show with Pep Guardiola. His mum passed away for the coronavirus. And you're asking him in five, six weeks time or whenever it may be to stand on the touchline. And he's just lost his mum to the very thing that's made you play the game behind closed doors and stuff. It doesn't sit right. It's morally not right. You know, no amount of money can replace, you know, somebody's life. You know, yesterday, for example, in the UK, there was nearly 800 died from the coronavirus. We've not even hit our peak. 
you know, and what we've been out of football now, four weeks or so, another couple of weeks or so, the players are going to need pre-seasons, you know, I spoke about this on last week's um, daily in one of my episodes, what Kevin De Bruyne was saying that once you stop playing for six, seven weeks, you need a pre-season, you can't expect to just go straight back into it, not at Premier League level and that intensity, with that much at stake, league titles, Champions League places, relegation, players would be dropping like flies through injury. Strange, man. And it's um, something that's going to have to be sorted out. And I'd like to see some clarity very soon. Uh, last piece of news involves Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And he insists that footballers are an easy target. And it is unfair to call them out during the coronavirus pandemic. Um, football has come under scrutiny as the coronavirus pandemic continues to escalate with the health secretary Matt Hancock quick to highlight the supposed lack of support being offered by some Premier League footballers. Um, and we've seen this story over the last few days or so and about footballers and wages and everything else. And I've had my say on this as well. And, you know, one of the one things that I think that we need to understand is that, you know, footballers are employees as well, first and foremost. And yes, they do get a lot of money, but not every player is on 100 grand a week, 150, 200 and whatever. Um, but it's not as easy as just going, you know what, cut my wages in half. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. These players have big contracts, all right? There's lawyers involved and, you know, they've got to work out where that money's actually going. How do they cut that? You know, on a weekly basis, monthly basis, fortnightly, you know, there's so many different things. And then they've got parts of contracts with um, clauses and other stuff. It's very, very difficult. And I do feel that a lot of footballers are being made a scapegoat, um, but they will get it done. And they will, you know, sort things out eventually. But I think that they've become a very easy target. Um, and I think we should be targeting more the clubs uh, with the billionaire owners that are trying to, you know, make the UK taxpayer pay their staff wages. I think that's what we need to be going after. So, um, yeah, pretty straightforward, that one. So there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. Um, let me know in the comments section what you think especially that story of Jose Mourinho, my word. Um, if you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button, make sure you smash a like on this video. I'll see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.